Welcome back my people. Part two of our eBay Turbo Civic build here. I would tell you what this is, but I really don't know myself. I think this is like a GT35 or a GT30 Turbo, like an Amazon one or eBay one, Performance World, whatever it is, and um, a non VTEC engine. So you can go from there. I did mention in my last video, if I got a thousand likes, I would buy my own Civic and we only got like 400. So maybe the same thing on this one. If you give it a thumbs up. And we have some wonderful news. Some people sell t-shirts, some people sell keychains. A lot of YouTube community has their own little merch things that they sell. I did do that for a little bit, but I partnered up with Black Sheep Industries and we opened a store. The link is down below. And for you guys who watch my channel, 10% off Boosted Lifestyle. Now, all the stock is in Edmonton because Nick hasn't set me up any yet, but we currently stock all kinds of V-bands in like three inches up to five inches and half sizings. And pricing's really good for us Canadian land guys, which is big because I got a package in the mail today and I paid $70 shipping on a $60 header flange. Thanks UPS. Anyways, the link is down below, just check it out. You don't have to buy anything, just go there. And then if you do buy anything, make sure to tag it on Instagram. We're jumping right into it. We're gonna join up this intercooler piping. We're gonna get all the aluminum stuff done. So I think this is one of my better moments with aluminum. The bump doesn't look so high, but I added more heat. And what that let me do is actually penetrate the inside more, it looks like. It looks like I got good penetration on the inside there. So I just time-lapsed a whole bunch of that. Uh, what we're doing is we're just adding this one. This one's actually gonna get welded straight to the intercooler. And then we have to put the extension piece on the other one, and that's where our coupler is gonna go. So keep pounding through this, and uh, we'll get to the next step. I swear to God, Paul, if you gave me a pipe that was cracked already, I just noticed this right here. Look at that. I'm gonna have to weld that, aren't I? You stupid Paul. What the heck? The penetration wasn't as good on this one. I messed it up a little bit, but for the most part it was good. It seems like when it's flatter, that's when I'm getting the most penetration. So maybe make it flatter and add more filler. I don't know. Let me know. These welds, although they look nice, see how they're bubbled up and they look like a cool kind of weld, like a stack of dimes, man. It doesn't seem like those welds actually penetrate all the way through the other side, whereas my other piece here, you can see how flat it is. But it looks like it welded the complete inside too. I'm gonna need some expert advice here. Just gonna put this back in and see uh, kind of where it fits now, I guess. So, whoa, we're gonna weld this end straight onto the intercooler. Looks like we're gonna need some sort of 45-ish here, maybe. Yeah, if we can find a piece of 90, I guess, and put it right here. Cut this off, put a piece there. See, the biggest problem we have now is that uh, 
We're just using leftover pieces from my build and whatever he gave me. So we're just using scrap pieces of metal and finding metal in this. Like I have this 90 right here we could probably cut, but that's like super bad aluminum. Oh, I have another 90 down here actually. Let's see what we can do. I don't have a marker, so we'll just guess. So this is what we have. Um, obviously it's not perfect, perfect here. There, this is where our coupler is gonna be. And uh, you can tell it's not perfect, but we worked with what we had. We made this weld, we made that weld, and then this one and this one. And we just made this whole little section here work. So before it was stupid, now we got the back door set up. Um, that's not on right now, but the back door set up and then we got the charge pipe done over here. So that's all the aluminum we have to do, except for that one crack that I think is on the underside of this pipe. I'm glad it's on the underside so we won't be able to see it once I weld it, but stupid thing. Also, look at this. Fan wires, look how thick they are compared to the new ones he added. And then we follow this. So it goes from black to yellow, and then it goes inside the frame rail here, and it comes out red. And then it goes to here where there's like, I think it's scotch tape and these wires are just twisted together with no solder. And then it's back to yellow again. And then it goes down in the firewall here, in through the firewall with no rubber grommet. So, uh, good job wiring your fan in, man. What up, new day. You like how I do that? I don't like upload a video after just one day now. I wait until I have a good amount of footage before I give it to you so I don't give you shit. In the last time that you've seen me, we bought a new thing for the shop. It seems like we did this last time too, where we bought a new thing for the shop, the bandsaw. But now we got a new, new thing. Um, it's kind of just on the floor right now. It needs to be mounted, but this is a tubing bender. Um, so we can make like roll cages, tube fronts, all that good stuff. And we actually got seven dies for it. Now I'm gonna have to clean it up I don't know if I want to mount it to the floor right yet. What I might do is get the hydraulic attachment for it. Um, the only thing is it's like a $130 bracket, but the shipping to ship it to Canada is $100. So I'm like, hmm. So if we spend a couple hundred dollars, we can make this so it has a hydraulic ram on it and then we won't have to mount it to the floor. We can put it on casters, which will be a bit better in our shop because where are you gonna mount it to the floor where you can bend tubing in here? But, Cool purchase. It's something that I really wanted to uh, increase our fab life. And uh, the next up on the list is probably gonna be a tubing notcher. So look out for that. Let's finish this thing up. So I got a couple of things I wanna do. I wanna fill this crack. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a cosmetic crack or actually a full crack, but just to be safe, I think I'm gonna fill it. We're gonna bead roll the end. I'm gonna show you how I do that with my little pair of pliers here. And uh, one more thing, with our turbo housing, I tried to just grind down this and weld little bumps on the end, but it didn't turn out the way I really wanted it to. So what I think we're gonna do to play it safe is take our little piece here and we're gonna weld that onto the end. It's gonna make it like this. It's not gonna be as strong as if it were like a piece of tube pipe, but we're working with what we have really. So that's essentially how we're gonna do that. I might as well while I have the aluminum uh, welder set up here. So specifically, if you guys didn't watch one of my other videos, specifically this set of pliers right here, um, they were actually kind of expensive. I think they were $35, which is pretty expensive for one set of pliers, especially at Canadian Tire. But they make the perfect bead on the end of a pipe. Especially like this thinner wall pipe stuff is just so easy. Now I don't want to ruin the pliers, so I could probably make it a bit smoother, but you can see the bump on the end there. So I'll do that all the way around. I'll just show you what it looks like real fast. There. Now instead of welding it and uh, perhaps ruining the pipe, you just put a little nice bead on the end of it. The only thing is it doesn't work on inner radiuses because the plier piece actually sticks out too far and hits the inside radius. 
So if I were to like to cut the end off these, it would work, but I'm not willing to ruin these pliers because I actually really like them for um, wire crimping. That one was a little tricky because uh, the metals were two different sizes and I didn't want to blow through one so it felt like I had to concentrate the torch a lot on the bottom half and just let it melt into the top half. Um, and then I went over it a couple times without filler just to see if I can get it flatter so we have a better um, surface to clamp on essentially. I might grind that down smooth, that way uh, we got a good clamping surface. This all could be solved if you didn't cut it off and put a 90 on it first. The heck? <laughs> Next up, we're just gonna take a little bit of scotch bread to our thing, clean it up. Yeah, it's definitely a crack. So we'll weld that just to make sure. Um, now, a uh, crack. But what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna drill little tiny holes at the end of each part of the crack, that way it doesn't spread. I broke the drill bit, because I was drilling like an asshole. I know I shouldn't be doing this all on my, all my fab table, but when I'm done, I'll give it a good clean with acetone. If you don't know, Acetone just helps like break down all like the stupid stuff that you don't want in there. The stuff that you can't see in the well that's gonna contaminate it. I barely even penetrated that metal. I'm gonna crank the amps and just uh, move it a little bit here. You can see here, um, I just went over it again, what was there, because it didn't look like enough penetration to me, so now it's a bit flatter, a bit more penetration. It doesn't look as diamy because I went over it, but whatever. So as you guys know, we're doing this on the super, super cheap. I, I, I don't even know how much we're in materials, but maybe $100. Um, and now, I know you guys are saying to yourself, yeah, that's why it's super cheap, because you're doing all the fab work yourself. It wasn't always like this. So if you guys go back to the channel, probably like a year ago, when I first got this welder, I couldn't weld for shit. I didn't know how to do it, no one taught me. I just, I picked it up and I started doing it. And I, I learned by failing and, and continued on that way. So if I can encourage you guys to do anything, it's just like, if you have the room and the funds, and pig welders aren't that expensive, start doing the fab work yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but like in the long run, it's going to save you so much more money if you're in like doing stuff like me where you just, you just want to keep doing fun stuff like this instead of, okay, I need this $3,000 manifold and this $5,000 turbo, like fine. You got deep pockets. I get it. But if you want to have fun, buy a welder. Hey, look at me. I'm a wizard. I made it fit again. Doesn't touch any of the sides in here. Nailed it. I'm the wizard. I think this is stupid. So the bumper is pretty much on there. You can see that the inner cooler sits really nicely in the bumper. It's actually matching the bumper, like the this line right here is matching how horizontal this is. They're like parallel to each other. That's what we go for. I, I can't stand when the bumpers off, or the intercooler is off to like one side like here. So anything besides this is dog shit. The only exception is if you run your turbo up in the bumper here and it feeds right into the intercooler and you can see the turbo housing. 
in the bumper too. That's the only exception you're allowed to do that. I even think on the Mustang, the bump, yeah, you can see the intercoolers in the middle too. I guess for all you new people to the channel for the Civic, you guys can see this is my personal Mustang. It's just an LS swap Mustang with a turbo on it. Um, and remember when I told you I just started welding before? Those welds right there on the inside, you can see how bird turd they are? Those are some of my first welds with the TIG welder compared to something like the progression over here. So like I said, buy yourself a welder. Do it. Well, we don't have any clamps so we can't clamp on our uh, backdoor pipe, but this is all bolted in. I want to put an air filter on this thing, but the angle right here is too stupid. Like it hits the headlight. So I do have a piece of metal I did weld up over here. It does have to be dented in on one side. I'm not going to touch it because it's really hot, but we might be able to put an air filter on that. Now that the aluminum is done, um, we can go on to steel. So our downpipe needs to be welded up. That's one of the last things to do. And we need to build a throttle cable bracket. As you can see, there is no throttle cable bracket. So I think I'm gonna get a piece of angle iron, bolt it to here, and then just uh, weld something onto the, the angle and run that through it. So here's our little bracket that we just made up. It's gonna fit like this. I originally wanted the cable to fit inside of here, but I don't think that angle is gonna work very good with the... Yeah, if we put it in here, I don't think that angle is gonna work very good for our throttle cable. So it's gonna have to go underneath here. And uh, I was just gonna weld the nut to it and run that cable through. But this thing's kind of big. If we can find another bolt instead of that stupid adjuster there. So here's what we ended up with anyways. This is our bracket that goes across. This one's gonna go underneath and then the cable is just gonna clamp to this piece. Um, so we have to add, we gotta change our cup to our FUPA cup, but we actually bought the legit adapter for it. This is expensive. I think it costed me like $70 Maple Leaf money by the time it got to me. <laughs> I can use a tungsten to open it. this cool off so I can paint it with a bit of this cheap paint but now I gotta build a dump tube and in hindsight I probably should have did that before I mounted the intercooler because it's stuck down behind here but I mean it shouldn't be that hard to make it's only a dump tube that goes straight down so it's just gonna be a straight pipe down to the ground this is all we have it's a bit larger than what we need um, I'll show you here this is the size of our clamp here, I'll do it this way, you can see better. You can see that this, it's supposed to fit in that inner diameter, not the outer, but we're just gonna butt weld it to the outer diameter. And we're gonna use the whole length of this pipe and just angle cut it so it goes underneath the engine. So nothing fancy here, just straight exhaust gases out of the way. Bypass that turbo. One more PSI boost, please. So when you do go to weld this stuff, make sure you like wire wheel this and wire wheel this, because most stuff comes with like a some sort of coating on it that makes it shit if you don't wheel it off. And we're gonna clamp this to our wastegate so we don't warp it. I mean, not bad. 
However, I learned real quick that jumping from aluminum back into steel, oh, completely different techniques. Kind of screwed me up there for a little bit. Look at this. I need a haircut again, don't I? Look at Shaggy Dog. Our waste gate's back in place down there. And here's our dump pipe that we came up with. Just comes off the gate up there and just angles out down underneath the pad. That's gonna be loud as hell. Now it's gonna be loud as hell because one thing about like up pipes coming up through the hood is there's nothing to reverberate all that exhaust off, but when you dump it down under the car or like straight at the ground, it kind of like reverberates off the ground and off the car and it's actually way louder than if it were like just out of the hood. Fun fact, I know this because of my Supra. Now I've been regretting this, but the time has come when we take the exhaust off and we weld that up. I saved it till last because it's just a lot of constant welding. A lot of sit down time. Let's do it, let's do it, whatever. Now the key to making this look decent is gonna be be in a comfortable position, take your time, make sure it's all prepped like acetone down like I just did and uh, yeah, don't try and rush it. If you try and rush it, you're gonna mess up and then then you're definitely not gonna do a good job. So this is obviously what we're doing. It's a lot of uh, turning and moving and stuff, but our welding is a lot better than when we started. I need to get a little more consistent. My hands are still a little shaky, but for the most part, it looks really good. We still have to do all this end right here. If you'll notice, I was doing about five welds at the same time, just so you don't have to rotate the pipe and then move up a weld and rotate the pipe. I would just um, stop and start on each weld. The thing is, and what you have to make sure of when you do that is that you're actually heating up the metal again. Um, it took me a while to get used to it. I wouldn't stay stationary when I moved to the next weld, but there was no heat in the pipe anymore. And so it would be really thin and then it would widen out. So I'd have to wait like a good two, three seconds in one spot before I would add filler and start to move again. So I forgot to do that. Um, it's all about being consistent, I guess. So we finally got this piece all welded up here. Um, typical Kyle, as we went down it and uh, we welded more, we got better. So you can see like this weld's probably significantly better than the welds up here. However, they're not even bad, but I should have put my pretty welds last up on top where you're gonna see them. But anyways, we didn't back purchase piece. If this were pre-turbo or if it were like something more baller build that we were doing, definitely back purge it. Right now we were just saving argon, didn't back purge it. So once we do get it up mounted, I'm gonna build like a brace for it so we don't snap it off. 
but there shouldn't be much load on this, so hopefully it holds. The next thing I have to do is, I have to weld this one, but because our pipe is a little bit smaller, here, I'll show you. Because our pipe's a little bit smaller here, and um, TIG welding really doesn't like filling gaps. I do have a pipe expander kit. And we're gonna just put a pipe expander in there and see if we can um, expand that pipe a little bit to match the B-band. That gave us a little bit there. To be completely honest, it didn't make that much of a difference. Just see if we can weld it, I guess. And welding helmet. my tungsten. I didn't even do that the whole downpipe and now I did it right here when I'm filming. <laughs> this is so bad trying to fill this gap. We were all good until we got to we try and fill this big gap right there. And then the rest is okay too. That like fill, fill the angle style gap, that's probably the easiest TIG weld you're ever gonna do. So if you wanna like learn TIG welding, probably practice on like a lap weld first. Um, but yeah, so those two pipes have to cool off and then we have to finish welding it to our flange here and then that's the exhaust done. Actually, that's everything done that we have to do. So, I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and yeah, so, next video we come back, we'll finish our exhaust welding and stuff, and then we'll actually take this for a drive. So, that'll be good, and uh, a bit change of pace from the Mustang. I would take this out, except we got trapped in Canada, and it's like minus two out today, so. I don't know if we're gonna do that. I'm having way too much fun building stuff. So, peace easy. No, wait. New saying. I almost fell on, on this. Do hood rat shit with your hood rat friends. Peace.